Here's a man who, uh, through thick and thin, has been steadfast in his convictions about stuff, real stuff that you eat, that you mine, that you dig out of the ground. Investment, big name, uh, Jim Rogers launched a new index called the Rogers Global, Re uh, Global Resources Equity Index. It's such a mouthful, I couldn't even say it right. Uh, the new product is being uh, jointly developed with Spain's BBVA Bank and a subsidiary of the Citic Group of China. The index comprises both traditional and alternative resource companies. Joining us for a very first right here on CNBC Chat is Jim Rogers himself, chairman of Rogers Holdings. Jim, good to see you. I am delighted to be Great here. Great to have right? you here in Hong Kong, too, uh, by the way. I'm glad to be here, although I, uh, something's wrong. I'm supposed to be in Singapore. No, 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 no. You're supposed to be right where you are. You're right where you need to be. Tell me about this uh, new project with Citic and uh, BBVA. Well, why, of, why now? What's it all about? Well, why now? The bull market in commodities has a long way to go. Uh, we've discussed this many times. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been going on for 12 years, but it's got at least another 10 years to go the way things are going. And many people want to invest in commodity stocks rather than commodities themselves. Mm -hmm. So here we are. We've come up with what we hope is a good commodity index. Okay. And uh, can you at least give us a hint of what the index is going to comprise? What's going to be different about this index and a lot of the well, other got CRB two, indexes? That two, we've well, the, the CRB is commodities. This is commodity stocks. Right. The, uh, the, it's got 200 stocks. It's the main companies in each sector, agriculture, mining, energy, alternative energy, forestry. The regular things. Um, in the 70s, when we had a bull market in co commodities, commodity stocks were the only stocks which did well mm -hmm. uh, if you looked at the side market. And that's going to be the continue to be the case if you ask me. Mm -hmm. What do you, uh, you know, you don't make money simply by compiling an index and then reweighting it and uh, giving people a barometer about how these companies are doing. Presumably, this is going to uh, lead to investable actionable ideas by investors. How, yes, how's no, that going to transpire? The, 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 yes, people will be able to invest in the fund. Uh, there, there's a place that people can invest. There's no question we're not doing this just for academic exercise. And if, we're, if I'm right and if we're right, then this will be the best performing sector of the world stock markets in the next decade or so. Okay, let's bring in the team from Singapore. Uh, Jim, uh, last time we spoke to you, you said uh, to buy a farm, so I guess this is a more investor-friendly way of getting in on the commodities story. Uh, tell <laughs> us, what's the appetite been like from investors out there? Well, Karen, you still should become a farmer. I mean, I'm telling you, I know it's hard to do that in Singapore. Do these look like hands of a farmer, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know. I said this is, it's hard to do in Singapore, Karen, but, but farming is still going to be a fantastic uh, sector, uh, occupation in the next decade. But the, the appetite so far is, is awfully good. I mean, it's the first day, so who knows? You can ask me in 10 years how the appetite was. But as I said before, the best sector that I know in the world economy is going to continue to be commodities. Therefore, this is a way to participate. You know, Jim, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not, I don't mean to appear like I'm giving you an unpaid endorsement or something like that, but there was a time not long ago when commodities were out of favor, you know, when oil fell to a third of what it was back in, in 08, and you stuck to your guns uh, when everybody else was saying that there's a glut, there's an oversupply, uh, the economies are crashing, demand for everything you, that you dig out of the ground, that you can grow out of a chute are going to go down. And yet now, you know, we're talking about food inflation on top of inflation and government scrambling to be ahead of the curve. What about the argument, though, that it's El Nino, that, it, that this problem that we're talking about now, this inflation issue, is going to dissipate within 12 months and it's we'll be not, on another dynamic? It's not going to dissipate. First of all, government's been printing money all over the world. I mean, it's outrageous what they're doing, but they're doing it, whether we like it or not. And second, we have huge shortages of everything developing, Bernie. Mm -hmm. I mean, in some states in America, the average age of a farmer is 58 years old. I mean, in 10 years, they're going to be 68 years old if they're still alive. Mm -hmm. Nobody's discovered a major oil field, an elephant, in over 40 years. I mean, the facts are that we're running out of known reserves of everything, mm -hmm. and shortages are going to get worse. There will be dips, as there, were in, as there was in 2008, but those are artificial dips, those are temporary dips. The bull market is still in place. I have no idea those oil fields are as old as I am, or close to. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are older than you, believe it or not. <laughs> Jim, much older. I mean, Jim, yes, good morning. Three, three. Hats off, yes. hats off to you. Hats off to you. You've got to congratulate you because you did call that rise in farmland prices correctly. And in fact, farming quite appeals to me, actually. So I might uh, go in that uh, direction uh, when I retire, perhaps. And maybe it's a bit early right now. But Federal Reserve banks in the U.S. farming heartlands, they've reported double-digit percentage increases in values last year. Isn't it starting to look something like a bubble, though? Shri, 
most agricultural prices are still extremely depressed on any kind of long-term basis. Sugar has gone up 600% in the past few years. Three, sugar is still 50% below its all-time high. 50% below its all-time high. Most agricultural products are unbelievably cheap on a long-term basis. Uh, Jim, this is Martin. Just real quickly, if we get back, get back to oil, at, at, do, you, do you have a magic number? I mean, at, at what point does oil threaten the recovery and, and potentially even kill it off? Well, Martin, higher oil prices, of course, affect nearly everyone because we all have petrol, we all have electricity, we all, we all use oil indirectly every day in many ways. Of course, that's a negative for the world economy. Some people will benefit. But we have to have our higher oil prices or we're going to run out of oil, Martin. We have to live with it. That's why I'm suggesting that people are better off owning commodity companies or natural resource companies rather than other things. There are always some people making money in the world. There are always some people losing money. The key is to be with the people making money. Okay, sounds like wise advice. Uh, more to come with Jim Rogers. Questions for him, email us at squawk at cnbcasia.com.